previous episode of the show, I talked about We Are One Global Film Festival and revealed some of my concerns about what I felt could have gone wrong with it. The festival launched officially this past Friday and will continue until the 7th of June, showcasing a program of features and short films as well as workshops and so on from major film festivals from all over the world for free on YouTube. And as far as I know, the feature film program was kicked off with a film titled Crazy World from Uganda. And I've got to tell you, it was one heck of a way to start the program. Let me put it this way. This was a no-budget comedy action movie, very exciting and incredibly well-made, full of creativity, with some exciting moments of absurdism thrown in. And all the while, it even manages to reveal some truths about the country, especially as far as child abductions are concerned. Let's not forget that this was the country of Joseph Coney, known for ordering the abduction of children to become child soldiers and sex slaves. So... Crazy World is great, and really, I hadn't heard of this movie, but I realized that it was a film produced by Wakaliwood, a film studio based in Wakaliga, a slum in Uganda's capital of Kampala, founded by director Nabwana IGG, who is also known as the Ugandan Quentin Tarantino. And get this. These are the same guys that made those ultra-violent, no-budget movies like Who Killed Captain Alex, the trailer of which went viral a few years ago, and I remember being one of the funniest things I have ever seen. Roman Film Productions presents the best of the best movies. Am I the only guy who remembers that? Oh my god. Oh, this is crazy. Uh, But yeah, well, with Crazy World, they embrace the involuntary comedy of their movies and their overall madness, and the result is amazing. What really got me was this narration, which was really odd. It's just a voice disconnected from the film itself of a man who sounded as if he was legitimately reacting to the movie as it was playing. Well, it turns out that this narrator was actually a translator VJ. And these are people who translate films in uh, Luganda, the language most commonly spoken in Kampala and its surroundings. In Crazy World, the VJ actually translates the film from Luganda to English. But rather than translating the word-for-word dialogue, he says things that briefly make you understand what's going on and even how you should react to the scene, especially during the action-packed scenes, which, by the way, are far better than those of Who Killed Captain Alex. But um, here's a clip, and maybe you get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Movie, 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 movie! Ah, He has a gun! Behind you! You're cheating! It's unfair! So you see, from this action-packed moment in the movie, you can see that more than being a human equivalent for subtitles, the VJ actually spices things up, puts some jokes in the film. And I've read in an interview with one of these VJs that he says that part of what he does is he basically helps people understand what is happening in the movie and how they should react to it, especially when the film is a foreign production. And so it can be difficult for some cultural barriers to be deciphered. So it's a way for less educated people, too, to enjoy the film, even without knowing what exactly is going on. I thought it was fascinating and uh, really something I didn't know. But it made me think how in the early days of cinema in the silent era in Japan, this, too, was a common practice. And for a long time, even in Europe, In America, there would be somebody doing the same thing, in many cases to help people who were unable to read the intertitles and the title cards. And then guess what? I checked out Wakaliwood's awesome YouTube channel and they have a version of Buster Keaton's film The Cop from 1922 with a VJ narrating it. And it's actually a really cool video that makes it easier to understand some of what VJing Ugandan style means. So I do encourage you to check that one out.